it's very interesting because there's a lot of misconception, a perception between Thailand and Burma, and also this perception has led to policy making decision formations that actually are dangerous to both countries. And I think in the case of Thailand, Thailand has a long history of demonizing uh, Burma, Burmese people. Mm -hmm. you look at our own history, political uh, culture, popular medias and all that, always, always portray Burma as a bad guy, bad girls and all that. Uh, do you think Thai-Burma relations could do something about it or since you have studied Thai-Burmese relations as well? It, it would remain a tragedy if, you know, say like, you know, uh, Thai opinion leaders and, um, you know, the uh, popular media, uh, as well as the Burmese, um, you know, uh, opinion leaders, do not address this, you know, misperception issue. You know, like um, no other countries within this region have had greater interactions, however negative, than the Burmese and the, and the Thai kingdoms in the past, you know. And we're Buddhist countries. People have similar demeanors, you know, be, people, uh, but be basically at the people to people level, there's a lot of uh, um, interactions, whether the Burmese migrant workers working in Thai families or, you know, like shopping uh, malls, mm -hmm. you know, uh, th there's, it's greater interactions. That's, uh, from the Burmese perspective, uh, the, the uh, Thai society is far more liberal, far more tolerant, you know, all the positive things. And, um, and I, I think it is the, uh, the uh, I should say, security establishments that are fending this old uh, historical misperceptions. I think, you know, when two Buddhist societies remain, you know, uh, in, in a negative uh, relation. I'm, I'm talking about societal level, yeah? uh, not not the government. Uh, neither one of us is part of the government, so we can't really uh, control what they do or decide for them. But at the level of um, uh, uh, both Buddhist societies, there's a lot to be done. I think there is a lot to be gained by you know trying to improve the uh, the perception, mutual perceptions, because you know at the end of the day, what an average Thai family wants is what an average Burmese family wants. You know, like we want to go to the temples and make offerings, that we want to have a, a good life after our death, we want to look after our children. And, and, and our values are similar, very similar, you know. And then like Thailand remains a kingdom, uh, we lost the kingdom and so we're no longer a kingdom. But, but at the popular level, we're very respectful of uh, uh, other people, each other. But, but I think the, the, the key is to take this poison, you know, historical poison out, and to make sure that neither security establishments, you know, um, inject this misperception, you know, and, and if which, when, when you have two societies that remain somewhat hostile to each other, you know, the, the real benefits go to the guys who control the guns. You know, they, they can use the fear, popular fear of the other, uh, to their advantage. You know, so, well, look, you know, we, we need to have a strong military because if we don't, the, the Burmese are going to come here and then, like, you know, attack your, our society. And, and, and the Burmese military does the same thing. You say, you know, like, if we're not strong, the Thais and the Chinese and others will come and attack us. So, basically, when, when you inject that sort of po uh, sense of popular fear, not, not, not just fear of the, the army uh, in, in terms of democratization and speech, free speech, but fear of the alien other. So I think like it, it, it's very, very, very important that, that we address this issue. Given the Thai-Burmese relation, because uh, Burma uh, destroyed old Thai capitals, Ayodhya, 236 years ago, so Burma has kind of confidence, you know, that it can deal effectively with Thailand, and it's the only neighboring country that feel pretty superior uh, against the Thai. And I believe that in Burmese you have the concept of uh, Nghe Nai, you know, when you right. talk of Thailand. Well, what, what, what do you think about this, that, uh, this superiority complex? Well, I, th I think it's, it's a form of mental illness, you know, that uh, the, the Burmese generals suffer from. And, then, uh, and to a degree, the, the uh, Burmese society suffers from this complex, you know, superiority complex. And then one of the reasons is that when you compare the two countries, yeah, 
um, Thailand is a very prosperous economy. Yeah, okay, well, Thailand is, mm -hmm. is not you know, uh, the uh, top 10 economies, but nonetheless, Thailand, Thai people live comfortably. They, they don't need, they can work and then they can earn a living. The Burmese people work and they cannot earn a living in the country. So the Burmese actually admired you know, the, uh, the Thai business acumen and then how the Thai people build their economies. And that's why like, the Burmese come here, not mm. Thai go there. Yeah? Where the problem lies is that um, the Burmese intellectuals, as well as the Burmese military establishment, have not been truthful or have not been self-critical. You know, so we, we, in our history textbooks, we talk about how bad the Japanese were mm. you know, towards the Burmese, how bad the, the, the British were, you know, beheading the Burmese patriots and whatnot. But we never uh, hear what the Burmese soldiers, you know, under say Alon Pia or like yeah. Burina, uh, did to the Thai people, yeah? yeah. And like you know, like when you go to Ayutthaya, you see like you know Buddha images, you know, That's like right. with no hats. But it actually, I would not say this is like a Burm. Uh, I would not describe it as like Burmese ruthlessness. Uh, it's it's actually the nature of the war. I'm not justifying it. It's mm -hmm. it's nothing to justify. You know what the what the Burmese did in Ayodhya was wrong. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the, the Burmese must accept it. You know, we, we need to process this. And then like, we cannot have double standards when it comes to... If, if we are doing something bad to the other people, we say, well, this is good. You know, we are beating other people up. That, that's, no, that's not uh, a, a Buddhist ethos. You know? And then, like, only, you know, the Burmese cry only when someone comes and like, beat them up. The nature of the war is such that the, the Burmese military still, you know, uh, today are doing exactly what they did you know 230 years ago to the uh, to the Thai kingdom but you know mind you like in those days uh, we're not fighting as peoples it's not like Thai peoples against Burmese peoples it's like ruling houses you know I mean like you know Thai people in those days were serfs of the kings and the Burmese people we didn't have, have the concept of citizens and that the Burmese people were owned by the kings you know, so so it's basically. Let me put it this yeah. way, you know, power and glory, mad Thai and Burmese kings fighting against one another, and in the process, you know, the people were dragged along, and so, you know, it, it's it's basically ruling classes problem that is handed down to the people. That's why I said, you know, average Burmese and Thai people, we have you know, day-to-day -day survival concerns. We're happy with like two meals mm. a day. And if we're happy if we have medicine for our old parents, we don't have the concept of glory. But you know, we're talking about God, uh, you know, kings that go to war for, you know, white elephant. Yes. You know, or Tripitaka. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So from what your description is very interesting. Now it's look as if now journeys, uh, Burmese general is going back now using modern weapons, you know, they're using the same mentality exactly by acquiring in these cases nuclear capacity that would be disastrous for for thailand i guess oh yeah well like you know like a couple of months ago i read an article uh, uh interview with um, pre, um you know M mrc uh, sukumphan talking about um thai military modernization in the era already magazine and, and i think that uh, even if the burmese junta did not succeed in building the nuclear program you know, uh, that they want, you know, for a variety of reasons, um, I think it will set the regional arms race off. You know, if 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 the Thai security establishment starts taking uh, the Burmese nuclear program seriously, and then you know, like uh, boys like toys, and then so they will say, well, if the Burmese are going for it we need to start looking at alternatives you know, so that we can counter. You know, if you look at what the Burmese generals are doing, because you have F-16, F-18, you know, all the American-made, uh, mo very like high-tech uh, weaponry, the Burmese are going for the high-tech um, Russian-made weaponry. You know, to counter F-16 and mm -hmm. F-18 from, from Thailand, they need to have, the reason is, uh, they need to have MIG-29. Yeah, we've got two squadrons now. You know, that's like you know, to the tune of one billion in a country where people are belly up. You know, one billion, and so you know, there are two implications. One for the Burmese, this is one of the poorest countries, actually the poorest within ASEAN, yes. poorer than Laos. You know, and 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 they're building, you know, like nuclear program, nuclear um, 
underground tunnels, buying massive like you know uh, weaponry from like uh, anyone who would sell, and but regionally, uh, ASEAN needs to seriously consider whether you know they believe in their own principle of nuclear free zone or not, and 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 also like uh, no one within the region, whether the governments or the people you know, should welcome arms race. You know, we, we still we still have so many poor people, you know, whether Thailand or other places, you know, although like Thailand's a lot. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Saini, well, uh, you. for your insights. Uh, very happy to have you on our program. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we got. Thank you for watching our program. We will come back next week. Good night. Swadika. So